Earlier today in game one of the quarterfinals, Pickneyville's Tim Bowersax with 18 points helped his team overpower Prairie Central 71-44. They will be taking on Westmont's phenom Pierre Pierce, who scored 41 points in the overtime game against Columbia High School 67-65, advancing to the semifinals. Peoria Civic Center in Peoria, Illinois for the IHSA Boys Class A State Basketball Tournament. I'm Lisa Aprati with the IHSA Television Network. Very happy to be bringing you the third game of the quarterfinals between the Pena Panthers and the Farmington Farmers. In just two years, head coach Gary Barker has led his team to a state tournament, a place that they have not been to since 1988 when they won a state title under head coach Charles Strasburger. For the Farmington far Farmers, well, they were here back in 1999, and they lost in the quarterfinal game against Rock Falls. So you are about to see the best competition there is among Class A basketball. We have a packed arena as well as 4 million households waiting to see which team will advance to the semifinals. So for more on tonight's game, here are your announcers, Lee Hall and Matt Taphorn. All right, Lisa, thank you very much. March Madness about to blow the roof off of this place here tonight. Matt, we are going to see a good one tonight between the Farmington Farmers and the Pena Panthers. The Panthers, the second group of Panthers to be here. And let's take a look at how they got here to Peoria. For Farmington, the road to Peoria is pretty short. You just go 20 miles down 116, but they had to go through guys like Monmouth in the sectional semifinal, Sherrard in the sectional final, and Rock Falls, another ranked team. You could argue that Farmington had one of the toughest roads to get to the Elite Eight for the Pena Panthers. They uh, defeated Moequa Central A&M, 73-47. In the sectional final, they got by Rochester by 10. And then it was a pretty easy run past Meridian Macon, 81-59 in the super sectional a lot of good players in this one tonight particularly for farmington you've got a good strong front line they're they're tall they're probably the tallest lineup in this field and it all starts with ryan welker one of the welker twins yeah ryan welker just a junior very young squad here for farmington but he can do a lot of damage both inside and out averages 14 points a game 85 percent from the free throw line very good shooter and four rebounds so he's one of the keys inside for them to be able to score and do some damage for Farmington. And Pena goes to Justin Shrake, 23 points a game. Yeah, and Shrake lit, lit uh, the game up the other night, super sectional for 45. He was 10 out of 13 from three-point range. Has range out to 25 feet, averaging 22 a game, as you said, 72% from free throw, five rebounds and five assists per game. Just an all-around great player here tonight for Pena. Let's take a look at our keys of the game. First, for the Farmers, they'll be the visitors at tonight's ball game. And there you get a look at those. Size matters. Huh? Yeah, we touched on this already with Ryan Welker. He's one of the keys of the big man. And his twin, the, the Gavin Welker, the double trouble with those two inside really doing the damage. And they need to play beyond their years. We touched on that. They only have two seniors on this ball club. Some people could say they may be a year ahead of schedule, but I'm sure they're ready to play tonight. And the keys for Pena, shake. Shrake and bake. Yeah, Shrake and break. <laughs> Justin Shrake. Again, he needs to play well tonight. They need to hit the glass to uh, offset some of that size that Farmington has and play with poise. It's going to be a, a partisan crowd here with Farmington fans here locally really ho hollering it up for Farmington Farmers. Farmington and Pena, the next two teams to try and get to tomorrow's semifinal. We will have the starting lineups coming your way. 50 years of IHSA television. We'll also have highlights of those for you throughout the evening coming up after these local breaks. Oh, 
Welcome back. There we are. Farmington 26 and 6, taking on Pena 27 and 4. This is the uh, first trip for Pena to Peoria. The last time they were in the state tournament, it was down in Champaign. This is the second trip to Peoria for, uh, for Farmington. They finished third back in 98. Let's take a look at the map. Of course, Farmington, you just buzz down Route 116, go through Hannah City, Travoli, and there you are. And Pena, not too far from here. They're about 45 minutes south of Decatur. Yeah, I tell you what, this whole tournament, you've had great attendance from all the schools. and just shows you how these towns really follow their team. And Farmington's just got a sea of purple and yellow here tonight. They were waiting in line when we were out in Farmington on Wednesday afternoon, there you get a look at Tom Wearsba, his 18th year at Farmington. 355 wins, 150 losses, 27 years overall as a head coach. Well, let's go to PA announcer Paul Herzog as we get ready for the starting lineups in tonight's National Anthem. Carver Arena features the Farmington Farmers, 26 and 6, and the Pena Panthers, 27 and 4. At this time, we ask you to please stand, address the flag with your hand over your heart. Remove your caps as Andy Wallace, a student at Freeport High School, leads us in our national anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed? At the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare. The bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Now let's meet the teams in this quarterfinal contest. Far Farmington, 5'10 sophomore, number 12, Tim Finney. 5'11 sophomore, number 14, Tim Frank. 5'11 junior, number 31, Tim Haley. 6'4 sophomore, number 32, Adam Oldfield. 6'0 junior, 40, Justin Rose. Six foot junior, 41, Jake Ayers. Six three junior, number 52, Doug Schmied. And a six seven senior, Ryan Frederick. Now let's meet the Pena Panthers. Five eleven junior, number 12, Todd Byers. Five eight sophomore, number 15, Troy Pinkston. 5'7", senior, number 20, Steve Carroll. 5'9", junior, number 22, Ryan McVickers. A 5'11", senior, number 25, Aaron Byers. 6'0", junior, number 40, Jared Cook. A 5'10", sophomore, 43, David Cherniski. 
5'11 junior, 44. Ryan Kasner. A 6'2 junior, number 50, Joe Fitzpatrick. And a 5'10 junior, number 55, Andy Levi. And now the starting lineups for this quarterfinal game. And a forward for Farmington, a 6'5 junior, number 34, Ryan Walker. And a forward for Pena, 5'10 senior, number 21, Brian McMillan. The other forward for the Farmers, the 6'6 junior, number 42, Trevor Williams. The other forward for the Panthers, a 6'3 senior, 32, J.I. McDowell. At center for Farmington, a 6'7 junior, number 44, Gavin Walker. At center for Pena, a 6'5 junior, 33, Josh Evans. And a guard for the Farmers, a 5'11 junior, number 30, Chris Agnoletti. And a guard for the Panthers, a 6'1 junior, 23, Justin Schrake. Another guard for Farmington, a 6'5 senior, number 50, Tim Mells. The other guard for Pena, 6'4 senior, 24, Jake Sinclair. The assistant coaches for Farmington, Brent Jackson, Chris Weaver, Tom Force. There's your starting lineups and a look at the Farmers. In season, 18. 26 and 6 coming in here. There's Tom Wearsma wearing the purple flower. I'm very disappointed he's not wearing the purple sport coat tonight. <laughs> well, he had it on last night at the banquet, so he may have just used it up on one night. Didn't borrow it from Rocky Hill from Harvey Thornton. He's got his own. There you get a look at Gary Boker in just his second year at Payne, and what a job he's done. Only his second year as a head coach. 50 and 10. 27 and 4 this season. Take a look at tonight's starting lineups for the Farmers. Chris Agnoletti at one guard. Tim Mel, 6'5 guard for the Farmers. Ryan Welker, Trevor Williams at forward, Gavin Welker, the other twin at center. For Pena, it's Justin Schrake, 22 points a game. Jake Sinclair, their point guard who gets it all started. Brian McMillan, J.I. McDowell, and Josh Evans for the Panthers. It's going to be the case of David versus Goliath in this ballgame. Bruce Jokish, Ronald Kuhlman, and Kevin Schnitker our officials for the evening's contest. Farmington 6'5", 6 6'7", 6 6 6 6 in the starting lineup. Farmers win the opening tap, and that's Mells with it. He is a senior, the only senior in the starting lineup for the Farmers. Pena in the man-to-man. -man. We'll see man-to-man -man out of both squads here tonight. Yeah, good pressure out on the floor on the ball. That's what they're going to need to do in order to keep a hand on it so they don't get a good look inside for the taller Farmington Farmers. This is Ryan Welker. His shot blocked. Here comes Sinclair with it. He kicks to the wing. That's McMillan. His shot's off the mark. Offensive rebound for McDowell. Jake Sinclair with the ball now. He's another guy to watch. He really runs this team, averaging about 16 points a ball game for Pena, and uh, really gets them in the offense and runs the show. He's the quarterback of the team. Here's Shrake with it. 45 points against Meridian in the super sectional final. Now Sinclair drives, gets around Mells, up and in, count it, and he'll go to the line for the three-point play. Took it right inside against the tall trees. Was able to get it up and lay it in. Again, that's that awareness by Jake Sinclair to take the ball to the bucket and create opportunities. Was able to get the bucket and the foul. Go to the line for a three-point opportunity. Six foot 175 senior. Makes the free throw. Payne is on the board. 
This is Gavin Welker with it now. He's 6'7". And Wiersma says he'd rather have it in his hands than Ryan Welker bringing the ball up the floor. Well, again, Payne is pushing them out on the floor, not letting them get close to the basket to try to offset some of that size advantage the Farmers have. They're big, but they can all shoot the three, including Ryan Welker. His shot there is missed. 50% from the field, 43% three-point shooter. Here's Shrake. That was McDowell, rather, with the miss. We played almost two minutes. Farmington looking for their first score. Gavin Welker gives it, gets it back, and Farmington's on the board. Good job by Welker to keep the ball up. When he got it, when you bring the ball down and try to take a dribble, that's when the smaller defenders can get their hands on the ball. Shrake puts it on the floor, puts it over Gavin Welker, but misses. This is Mel's bringing it across midcourt. Ryan Welker's open for three, good rotation, but doesn't go. A little quick shot that time in transition. That's a shot you can get any time throughout the offense. Trying to get himself going offensively from three-point range, was able to knock it down. Shrake in the lane. Well, one way Shrake can free himself up from three-point range is to knock, knock down a few of those mid-range shots and make him honor his driving ability. That time he got it open in the lane and was able to knock down the little 10-foot shot. Mel's drive bounces it off the rim, and it's Williams over the back. Trevor Williams whistled for the personal. Good job by Josh Evans that time of blocking out on the defensive rebound. Maintained a position on his man, was able to draw the foul. Steve Carroll checks into the ball game for Pena. He replaces Brian McMillan. It's 5-2 Pena. We played about three minutes. Great, guarded by Agnelletti, and now he kicks it out for the jumper for Sinclair. Followed, Steve Carroll just into the ball game with the offensive board. And Steve Carroll, the smallest man on the floor, 5'7", got an offensive rebound and put back before anybody knew he had the ball. Bad, bad miss that time by Sinclair from the perimeter, and Carroll was able to put the ball back in. Gavin Welker gives to Ryan Welker, he's 0 for 4. And now the rebound just into the ball game for Farmington. Farmington was not shy of letting that ball go from three-point range. Here's Carroll again. And a foul on Ryan Welker over the back. His first, second team on Farmington. Farmington's only one out of seven from the field so far, and that was a play-in basket that they had. They're 0 for 4 from three-point range. Tom Weirsville will try to get things going offensively. 4-12 left first quarter, 7-2. This IHSA broadcast brought to you by Country Insurance. Real people, real answers, real quick. And by the Midwest Dairy Association on behalf of your local dairy farmers. Ah, the power of cheese. Zoom play going to the free throw line after drawing the foul is Dennis Pace, and this is almost an automatic point. This brilliant shooter, six foot three and senior from Collinsville. Fifty years of IHSA television, and we're bringing you Pena and Farmington here. Seven two is the Collinsville Cayhawks. Cole is awesome. They've come for the trophy. Pena wants to bring home the hardware. They need a win here tonight to do that. Well, the Farmington's going to continue to launch them from three-point range and, and not take advantage of their size like we talked about in the pre in the open. Uh, you know, that's going to be a situation they're going to be able to benefit from. Sinclair gets things started from the point. He gets it back from McDowell on the wing. Sinclair tries to free, and it's good, and it's 10-2. Just a quick little look off when he had the ball. Got his shoulder square and went up. Nice little follow through and knocked down a three-point shot. 
Washington, as Matt mentioned before the break, one for seven from the floor. Mells drives and picks up the foul on Sinclair with the block. That's the first foul on the Panthers. Sinclair was moving just slightly on that play, wasn't able to get square to his body. Called for the blocking foul. Armington with the inbounds. Gavin Welker gives it to Ryan on the wing. Guarded closely by Shrake. That's Brian Friedrich, number 54, just into the ball game. Ryan Walker puts it on the floor and makes his first shot after missing his first four. Well, better shot that time. Got it into about 12 feet on the baseline. Used his size. Went over a nice follow through and was able to knock down that short jumper. Shrake tries the three. He hit 10 in the super sectional. Good pressure on the shot that time, though. Open momentarily and he flew at him. And here's shot. Here's Shrake with the steal. Goes in against Mells off the glass and good. Nice little hesitation that move, move that time by Shrake as he was going into the basket, avoided the contact and the possible charge. Back to an eight-point lead for Pena. Ryan gives to Gavin off the glass, no good. One shot now for the Farmers. Pena doing a great job on the board, eight-four advantage so far at this, po this point. Steve Carroll for three off the bench. He's got five off the bench. And it's an 11 point pain of lead. Interesting to see how the young farmer team reacts to this deficit so far here in the early going with two minutes left in the first quarter. They have played one of the tougher schedules in the state to get here. Gavin Walker tries from outside. It's off the mark. And Friedrich whistled for the foul. Farmington now just two for ten from the field. Well, the wheels haven't come off yet, but they're a little wobbly right now. Farmington really settling for a lot of jump shots instead of taking the ball to the basket. And they're early going, they're a little cold, a little uh, nervous possibly, and those shots aren't going down. Trevor Williams back into the game, number 42 for Farmington. 12-2 scoring run for the Panthers. They have the ball here. Whistle inside. An illegal screen on Pena. He's on Carroll. That's his first, second team foul on Pena. Troy Pinkston, number 15, checks in. A 5'8 sophomore. He replaces Jake Sinclair. He's off to a good start with six points. But Mills is good with the ball at 6'5", isn't he? Yeah, a lot of these guys handle the ball very well. Both the Walker twins handle the ball well as well as Mills. And they're pretty good shooters. They haven't shown it here in the opening quarter. Well, the tough part about playing in this arena is there's not much background when you shoot at that basket. Inside, Gavin Welker off the glass. And you're a jump shooting team, that really creates a problem. But again, a good effort that time on the offensive end to get it a little closer. Nice, easy lay in that time for Ryan Welker. Almost thrown away. And Agnoletti got a hand on it. So did Mel's Loose ball on the floor. Jump ball. And it's Pena's ball on the alternating possession. Sinclair checks back in now for Pena. He'll give Shrake a blow, and Todd Byers makes his first appearance. Number 12, he replaces Carroll. Pena getting a lot of players in there in the early first quarter. Getting a little sweat on them and getting ready for the ball game. One minute left, first quarter. Pain is led by 11. The lead is now nine. Sinclair off the dribble. Mills brings the rebound down. And Farmington will get at least one more shot at it here in the first quarter. Farmers played great defense they, in the last uh, four games have held teams to 38%. And 
Ryan Welker gets the foul against Troy Pinkston. They've also, in their last five games, Matt, held teams to at least one quarter where they scored in single digits. They're in danger of having that happen to them here. Well, and a lot of that's due to the pressure that Payne is putting on them out on the floor. Good inbound play. That is Trevor Williams, the junior, averaging 10 points a game. Gary Boker wants one shot. The Pena crowd on their feet. Sinclair goes to work with four on the shot clock. That one's no good. And that one won't count even if it goes. Great start for Pena. Farmington trying to answer. 15-8 after one quarter. We'll be back with more after these local messages. Welcome back to the third game of the quarterfinals. Pena right now in the lead. But joining me is the head coach's wife from Farmington, Tom Wiersba's wife, Cindy. And Cindy, all I've heard the whole time that I've been here is that you are the biggest supporter of the Farmers team, as well as you basically adopted all those players. I've kind of become everybody's mother. Um, they come to my house to eat. We go to church together. I'm the one who reminds them, make wise decisions. They know I'm praying for them every second they're out there. It's been a great job. We've got some great kids, and um, I love it. We've, uh, they've just all come to my house. Instead of having one of my sons playing this year, I've got 14 guys on the court tonight. That's great. Well, you do a wonderful job. I've only heard great things about you. Thank you, Cindy. I'll send it back to Lee. All right, Lisa, thanks. That was a great-looking hat. I'm a hat connoisseur, and I love that hat. Inside Ryan Welker, of course, uh, Coach Weersba and Mrs. Weersba had a couple of good players who were their sons. Ben and Rhett rested Austin P. right now. Yeah, they both had great careers at Farmington and were standouts on their teams. And now the team has been turned over to a bunch of underclassmen who are so far doing well when they can keep the ball inside the lane but have struggled from the beyond the three-point line. They cut the paint a lead to five. and looks like they've picked up defensively a little bit here as we open the second quarter. Here's Shrake, pulls up over Mills, no good. Rebound McMillan and swatted out of bounds. The Farmington bench says they want the ball, and now there's, it's a foul. Oh, the outside official made a call. It's a foul on Mills. Well, I thought it was a lot of ball there. The, the official down on the, the baseline did not make the call, and the official out on the floor came in and whistled him for a foul two-shot opportunity for Payne of Panthers. Brian McMillan goes to the line, 66% free thrower. No good on the first. There's Tom Wiersma, been a head coach at Greenview, Bushnell, Jerseyville in the last 18 years at Farmington. McMillan one of two at the line. Saw Coach Wiersma there begging his team to block out. Right now, Pena has an 11 to six rebound advantage, and we said that was one of the keys for them in this ball game was to do a better job on the boards. Here's Mells with it. Closely guarded by Byers of Pena. Now Friedrich looks to go inside and to Gavin Welker, and he'll go to the line. Gavin is the taller of the two Welker twins. Gavin's 6'7. Ryan is 6'5. Foul is on Sh 
Schrake. That's about the only thing that's different between those two, though. They look identical. You know, I talked to him yesterday. Ryan says Gavin's a picky eater. And he'll eat anything. Gavin is number one in his class, a 4.0 grade point average. And that's Gavin we're talking about. Ryan, a B student. Coach Wiersma says he could be an A student if he wanted to. <laughs> Gavin Walker hits them both. And again, it was paid off by getting the ball inside once again for Farmington. They've done all their damage in the paint. Pena once led by 11. Boy, a tough shot that time. And a J.I. McDowell. Jumper. No, that's, excuse me, Josh Evans. Josh Evans just in off the bench. Triple team down there was able to spin away from the triple team and knock down the little five-foot shot. Gavin Welker inside. It's Williams with the layup. Nice move. Nice give. And the Success lead in the paint. As soon as they dump that three-point shot, they've gotten back into this ballgame. Lead cut to four. Now they're actually shooting better from the field than Payne is. Farmington comes up with the steal there. Here's Mel's in transition. The farmer's always in motion. That's Rock Gavin Welker. That's Gavin. Gavin for three. Ryan couldn't hit one, so Gavin stepped out and knocked one down. 11 for 29 coming into the ball game, and the Farmers are within one. More March Madness after this network break. We're back in Peoria, the tale of two cities. Farmington, founded in 1834, population 3,000 in Fulton County, just 20 miles from Peoria. They are the smallest Class A school in the Elite Eight at 406, member of the very tough Olympic Conference, as is McComb, who plays in the next quarterfinal. Pena, founded in 1856, population 6,500 in Christian County, right along Route 51. Farmington's the smallest school, but Pena's only got three more kids. Yeah, and I bet those three kids are here tonight. <laughs> I bet they are. I think everybody from Pena's here tonight. Highest scoring team in the tournament, about 71 and a half a game. And Farmington's doing a good job on it in this ball game to keep their out their scoring output to a minimum. And one thing that Pena wants to do in this ball game is play 94 feet and run the ball up and down the floor, get the taller Farmington farmers a little bit tired, and so far they haven't been able to do that. It's a 7-2 run for the guys in purple. Sinclair will back it back out. Tom Weir with the Farmington coach very impressed with Jake Sinclair as a point guard. J.I. McDowell on the baseline. Good hands on defense. That time Tim Mills came up with the steal. Good, good defense by the Farmers. They've tightened it up here. And can take their first lead. They go inside to Gavin Welker. Front of the rim, no good. And a foul. We'll go against the Farmers. He's on Tim Mell. is going over the back that time. That's his second. Better job that time by Payne defensively, pushing Welker off the block. They can get the catch the ball further on the floor, not close to the basket like he's done so, so many times here in the first half for the easy lay-ins. Ryan Smith, number 24, checks into the ball game for Farmington. He's a 5'9 junior. Panthers working around the perimeter. Blair will set it up again. Puts it on the floor, steps in off the window, no good. Littlest guy out there had it. Ryan Smith at 5'9 had it. The paint is in there battling every rebound, even though they're outsized. They're really going after it. Farmington's just not really grabbing the ball and bringing it in. Panthers haven't scored in over two minutes. Tim Mells for three, it's good. Behind the strike, he gets Farmington their first lead of the night. 
After missing their first four, they've knocked down their last two threes. So they may have settled down here in this atmosphere. And Shrake answers. That was deep. That's about five feet beyond the three-point line. We talked about his range, about 25 feet. That time he got just enough room to get his shot off. He's got seven. Nice passing inside to Mel from Gavin Welker. Mel's now with five. Good recognition that time by Welker. He drove the lane, open momentarily, but dumped it off. Shrake's open for three. What happened to the defense? <laughs> We talked about that in the super sectional game. He had 45 points, 10, 10 for 13 from three-point range. Just phenomenal effort. When they know that you're hitting those shots, you're going to get some attention defensively. He's still able to knock it in. He doesn't need a whole lot of room. He gets that shot off quick. There's a lot of guys sucking wind right now. I see painted guys with their hands on their knees. This really hasn't been an up and down ball game for, to any great extent. I think. You know, just to some extent, you got guys out here emotionally drained more than physically. These two teams met in the Jacksonville Summer Shootout. Pena won. Gavin Welker, number 44, did not play. As the Farmers turn it over. Not a very smart pass that time. As Welker wasn't set. a five-point lead. Coach Gary Boker over on the sideline. He's got a big smile on his face. He's liking what he's seeing now. You've got to guard him once he crosses the center line. Mells brings it out to the three-point arc and hits. Tim Mells, 6'5", played in the front court last year. Tom Weirs will put him out at the point guard spot. And he is lighting it up himself. Hit his last two threes. Keeping it close, but they really need to get Justin Shrake under control. And it's Pena on the board again. Josh Evans inside. He's got four. It's turned into a scoring display now. Well, and that's the other thing that happens once you hit a few shots is you draw a little bit more attention defensively. And that time, Shrake was able to find the open Josh Evans for the lay-in. Here's Gavin Welker in the lane. That's short. Good solid defense that time. Just keeping your hands straight up against Walker inside. Didn't really go strong to the bucket. Came up a little short. J.I. McDowell tries the three. It bounces no good. Chris Agnelletti checks back in for Farmington. And so does Brian Friedrich, number 54. Minute 31 left, second quarter. Gary Boker, just his second year as a head coach, he was an assistant at Newton High School. Got the painted job a year ago. Won 50 of 60 games, and there you get a look at the three-point shooting. It favors Painter, but Farmington's coming on, man. They've hit their last three, and the last two by Tim Mills. Their big guys can all handle it, and they can all shoot it. Gone inside, and that's opened up some outside shooting for him. Inside, Friedrich. Ryan Friedrich is a 6'7 senior. They just keep bringing size off the bench, too. Two-point paint a lead. We're under a minute to go now, second quarter. Shrake. Shrakes and bakes. Missed that time. Evans got a hand on it. Pena comes up with it. Shrake, not bashful. Oh. Puts it right back up and throws a fist in the air. <laughs> He's got six. Make that 15. And, and again, he had very little room that time as Ryan Walker was flying at the shot. Almost blocked the shot, as a matter of fact. But Shrake just doesn't need much room to get that shot off. Mel's forced at that time. Pena has another chance. That was a three by Shrake the last time down the floor. And a blocking foul will go against Agnelletti of Farmington. Really a poor shot that last time down the floor by Mel's. Really forced it up there, even put it up with his left hand. He can do a better job of just reversing the ball and see if they can get something inside on the other opposite side of the floor. Ryan McMillan. Ryan McMillan goes back to the line. He's one of two there tonight. 18.3 seconds left in the second quarter. Tom Weirs has got his team back in this one. That 
after trailing by 11 early. McMillan's second free throws off the mark. 32-27, time winding down here in the second. Mills with it between the circles. Now off the screen is Gavin Welker. Gives to Agnelletti, not a big scorer. That one's no good, and that's how the first half will end. Agnelletti only averages about a point and a half a game. He got the last shot because he was open. That's probably not the shot Tom Weir's the one. No, you can tell he's a little uncomfortable shooting. They were actually lucky to get away without a foul that time, and Ryan Welker going over the back. After trailing by 11 early, Farmington's come back to pull within five at the half. Lisa Prati is with Tina's Gary Boker. Coach, in the very beginning of the, of the first half when you're talking here, obviously your shooters really came up and they, they stepped up on the perimeter here in, in the last three or four minutes of the game. And defensively, your team doing a great job inside now, not allowing Farmington to score. Yeah, we, uh, we've done a really good job on the boards, keeping them off, getting rebounds and getting out there and running. We'd like to run a little bit more if we can, but uh, yeah, they're doing a good job getting back. So I'm hoping maybe they'll take a toll on the second half. Well, also, they're also, Farmington's also bringing a lot of their bigger guys coming in as we saw the last three minutes here of the game. Yeah, they got, they got big guys. They just keep bringing them in. It's, uh, it's amazing. They got a very good ball club. Uh, we got off to a good start. We knew it wasn't going to be easy, but, uh, you know, they're a good ball club. What are you going to tell your, uh, your players here for the second half? Oh, we just got to keep it up. We got to keep doing a good job on the boards. Offensively, maybe we need to take some better shots here and there, but uh, be patient and work for each other and uh, see what we can get to happen. Coach, thank you very much. I'll send it back to Lee. All right, Lisa. Nice job by Farmington to get back in it, Matt, after falling behind by a bunch early. It was. It really started to get inside where they did the damage, and then they hit a few threes right there at the end, end of the first half. 32-27, our halftime score. Back with more from Peoria after this network break. Emergency. Only country insurance gives you immediate advice. Jeez. Welcome back. We're at the half right now. Pena in the lead, 32 to 27 against Farmington. Right now, you're going to get a chance to watch the Jesse White Tumblers as part of our halftime show. the Jesse White Tumbler is all in action here doing a great job entertaining the crowd here at the Peoria Civic Center. We'll be back with more action here, second half action and more stats coming up for you right here on the IHSA Television Network. I'll send it to a local break.
We are back in Peoria, halftime. Payne out to the 32-27 lead. It was an 11-point Panther lead earlier in this ball game, and it looked like they might uh, run away and hide from Farmington, but the Farmers got back in it, got the ball inside a little bit, and that created some outside opportunities, and they shot much better. They started off 20% there early in the first half. They brought it up to almost 50% at the half. And that's when they were shooting the ball from the three-point range. Once they got the ball in the, in the paint, they were able to cut into that lead, and we'll see. take a look here at the halftime stats. They really started doing a better job of shooting the ball, and both teams shooting about 50%. Three-point range, you see six out of 13 for Pena. Four out of five of those are for Justin Shrake. He really got hot in a hurry. And the other big big key here is the rebound advantage. 14 to eight by Pena. Five of those on the offensive end. Both teams doing a good job of taking care of the ball. Three turnovers for Pena and only two for Farmington. Individually leading scorer for Farmington, Gavin Welker with 11. Tim Mells with eight. He's hit a couple of threes. And for Pena, it's Justin Shrake, and not bad. 16 points in 15 minutes. Sinclair with six, Carroll with five. And, and 14 of those 16 came in the second quarter, so he really got hot. Yes, he did. He hit four threes there in the second quarter. To actually, according to my count, 12 out of his 16. But he looked like he had all 16 in the second quarter. <laughs> yes, he did. He, uh, he has that uh, capability coming off that 45-point game in the Super Sectional. 32-27, our halftime score. We will be back with more after this network break on the IHSA TV network. It's a local break. Two twenty-seven, our halftime score. If you're watching up in Walnut, they're having problems on Channel 3. Stick with us, though. We're going to get those taken care of and bring you second half action here. Farmington taking on Pena. It's a five-point ball game here at the half. Let's take a look at some of those first half highlights. I bet we see a little bit of Justin Shrake before well, this, this time. Well, this you're going to see him passing the ball instead of scoring the 16 points he had. But that's what happens when you draw that attention like he did in the first half. But here's really did most of his damage, getting off that quick three-point shot. Four out of five threes in the first half for 16 points. On the other end for Farmington, they got the ball inside here to Williamson, or it's Trevor Williams, excuse me, and he lays in two. And then we get into Trevor, or excuse me, Ryan Welker, the two Welker twins. That's They're hard right, to keep apart, they but sure are. Uh, that was on his only uh, two-point basket in the first half, so he got off to a little bit of a slow start. And Shrake's threes aren't, he's not standing on the line. He's three or four feet at least behind him. No, he doesn't get off the floor very far, but he gets a shot off very quick. It's a five-point game here at the half, 32-27. We'll be back with more from Carver Arena after this network break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Carver Arena. Farmington making their fifth appearance overall in the state tournament. Best finish back in 1998 when they finished third. They went into that tournament undefeated and were one of the favorites to win the state tournament that year. Pena, fifth appearance, best finish. First place in 88, Charlie Strasburger, the head coach. And he was the head coach when Prairie Central finished second. So. He has ties to a couple of the teams that made the Elite Eight this year. Let's go to Lisa Prati with Farmington head coach Tom Wiersma. Coach, 
you're really, your team really stepped it up with like three or four minutes left before the half. What did you tell them here on the bench? Not much. We just had to try to take the ball inside a little bit more. What we got to do now is stop Shrake from shooting the three-pointer. Well, and ab ab obviously, too, a lot of it had to do with some of the turnovers. They were capitalizing on turnovers. Pena was, but you really stopped that with a couple minutes left before the half. Well, I tell you, the thing that hurt us most was their offensive rebound, and I think they had six offensive boards, four for putbacks, and we had zero. So that's the difference in the ballgame right now. Great, Coach. Thanks. Good luck You're in the second half. Back to you, Lee. All right, Lisa, thank you very much. Sounds like Coach Tom Wiersma may have been shouting a little bit in the uh, halftime meeting there to, to rebound the basketball. He's, he's exactly right. They had five offensive rebounds, did Payne in the first half, and a lot of those were second-chance opportunities. Payne's first Sweet 16 appearance back in 1946. They used to count them all. all the, they had 16 teams in the state tournament way back when. Now cut down to eight. Tom Weirs has got a cold. He's that not much of a yeller. Yeah, he's not much of a yeller. I think maybe his wife might have a sore <laughs> throat from yelling. She's, she's into the games quite a bit. Farmington's first Sweet 16 appearance back in 1972 with Coach Bill Wilson. Farmington East, as was known as back then. A lot of excitement out on Route 116, just west of Peoria. Was there a Farmer's West? I think it was... Farmington East it was what it was called way back then. If memory serves. I was just a young guy in 72 though. As opposed to now. As opposed to now. There's Sinclair. First possession at the bucket. He's got eight. And we touched on this in the first half. Sinclair is the quarterback of this team really gets him going. The other team starts to concentrate on him and it really frees up Shrake for his offensive outburst. Seven-point lead now for Pena. Ryan Welker gives inside to his brother Gavin. Nice touch on the turnaround. Gavin Welker with 11. And that time Welker again got the ball closer to the bucket, down on the block, was able to get inside the lane instead of shooting outside. Was able to make that 10-footer about a three-footer. Pena works against the man-to-man -man now. Yeah, the taller Gavin Walker at 6'7 on Shrake this half. I think that extra two inches may have altered a couple of Shrake shots in the first half. Went for the steal. That three is off the mark. Air ball. And a good job by Mel to help out defensively and fly at that shot and alter it just a little bit against, against Shrake. Bounce pass is kicked by Pena. It'll be Farmington ball out of bounds. Well, that worked in the first game for... Pinkneyville, let put uh, Tim Bowersacks at 6-5 on Casey Hammond and shut him down. Farmington will try the same strategy here. Farmington goes inside. Bounces it off the rim. No, that was Williams with the miss. And now Pena comes the other way. Sinclair, nice recognition. Shrake the layup. And that's what Pena wants to do is get some easy baskets out of transition. By the time they push the ball off the floor, and Sinclair, with good recognition out of the transition, hit Justin Shrake. Inside Williams again. Williams able to knock that one down after he missed the easy lay in the last time down the floor. And a point of emphasis for Farmington coming out of the halftime meeting. Get the ball inside. Farmington's defense only allowing 45 points a game, and Payne has already got 36. They've done quite a number here tonight on Farmington's defense. Well, one four set, mismatch out on the top, see if Justin can Sinclair can get up to the basket. And he hits. Gavin Welker tried to draw a charge, but couldn't get in there. Good recognition that time by Coach Gary Boker. He realized that Williams was guarding Justin Sinclair on the, the point. Set up the offense to let him get to the basket. Gavin Welker, no good, follows his own shot. He's got 13. And comes up with the block there. He has seven blocks in the super sectional win over Rock Falls. Five minutes left, third quarter. And Payne is 
really looking to push the ball right now, and that time, the last time down the floor, Farmington did a good job of recovering. Gavin Walker coming up with a big block. Fouls on McMillan. 38-33 our score with 4.57 left in the third. More after this local break. the side. And the gun sounds to end the ball game. Collinsville wins the state championship 55 to 52. And look at them go wild. The Collinsville Kayhawks with the state championship. Who will come away with the big trophy this year? 457 left here in the third. Farmington trailing Pena 38-3. Even after all these years, there's the same kind of excitement when a team wins and the crowd storms the floor. Collinsville won a couple of state championships under Virgil Fletcher, 1961, 1965. Former Illinois State coach Kevin Stallings, one of his players back in his high school days. Farmington looking to cut into a five-point paint a lead. Just about midway through the third. Welker draws the double team. Gavin falls, and it's a jump ball, alternating possession, Farmington ball. That time Gavin Welker fortunate not to get called for traveling. He was rolling around on the floor quite a while there, but good hustle by both teams to try to get possession of the ball. Ball tipped as it's inbounded to Mells. Farmington now shooting 50%, 51.7 for Pena. Gavin Welker, nice move, lefty layup rolled out. Can't believe it. Here's out by Josh Pena. Evans, just to pressure the shot a little bit. Steve Both Carroll, miss. three is no good. Evans with the rebound. Could have been an over the basket call that time after the shot went off the rim. No call by the official. Mel's nice pass inside to Agnelletti. Only a point and a half a game. That's his first basket tonight. And at 5'11", I think they lost him with all the size that Farmington has out there. They didn't expect him to be in close to the basket. Pena with the miss. Here comes Farmington. They can cut it to one or they can tie. Now the double team on Mel's. And the foul, foul on Steve Carroll. Foul him 75 feet from the basket. That's a tough foul. Coming up next here on the IHSA TV network, another Olympic conference team, Macomb, taking on Bureau Valley. The Bombers upset Pleasant Plains, the number one ranked team in the state in the super sectional. Pleasant Plains last year's champs. That's coming your way next. Bureau Valley with their return trip this year with Ruben Slock, the All-Stater. Another great player at about 6'5", 6'6". Very good perimeter player for Bureau, Bureau Valley. Mells walks it across, 3.40 left in the third. 38-35, Pena. Ball tipped away and stolen by the Panthers. Here they come four on two. Farmington recovers nicely. Shrake puts it on the floor, in the lane, up and good. He can hit the three or he can put it on the floor. He's got 20. That was a great change of pace, crossover drill that time by Shrake to get inside for an easy two. There's Ryan Welker down the lane. His first basket of the second half. He's got six. Farmington able to get a couple easy transition buckets here late as well. Josh Evans no good. Gavin Welker got a hand on it. Williams comes away with it. Three-point ball game. Here's Ryan Welker, floater in the lane. Gets it back, puts it on the floor, off the glass and good. Ryan Welker's come back alive here in the third, and it's a one-point game. Another offensive rebound put back. Farmington's really doing a good job of going after the glass and getting the ball back in and really starting to take advantage of their size and wear down the smaller Pena Panthers. Gary Boker is out on the floor and right in his team's face after they've allowed Farmington to get back in this. 
Here's the twin doubles, Ryan and Gavin, averaging 26 points, 11 rebounds a game between them. Right now they're at 21 points and nine rebounds, so they're getting close to those averages. We talked about that in the, the open as well, the double trouble of the Welker Twins. Shrake and Bake, Justin, 51 points earlier this year against Ramsey in a 108 to 72 win. And he put up 45, as we mentioned, in that super sectional victory over Meridian Tuesday night. 10 for 13 behind the arc. And Coach Boker says they shoot 100 threes after practice, and he's made as many as 83. Well, that's amazing. A lot of times you, you figure if a guy shoots, you know, 33% from three-point range, it's like shooting 50% inside the three-point range. So at that percentage, he's shooting 83%. That's remarkable. And he's four out of six in this ball game, so guy with that kind of range and, and just shoots it unconsciously. You had a little success with that three-point shot at ISU, too, didn't you? Well, I was about in the 50% range, but not, bad. not quite this good. <laughs> a one-point pain of lead. They led by 11 early. We got ourselves a ball game here with 2.20 left in the third. Lee Hall, Matt Taphorn, IHSA March Madness. Quarterfinal number three. Shrake for three. A rare miss for him tonight. Really took all the arch he could to get that over the top of Gavin Walker. Gavin inside to Ryan. Nice hang time there. Nice move. Held it until the defensive man was out of the way and scores. And it's a Farmington one-point lead. Ryan Walker now at double figures with 10. The Walker's doing a great job working in tandem. First half it was Gavin Walker, and second half it's been Ryan Walker. J.I. McDowell, charge. Gavin Walker on the defense that time. Good effort by McDowell to try to take the ball to the basket, but Gavin Walker did a great job of getting over, sliding over, getting himself set, and drawing the charge. 14-8 in favor of Farmington this quarter. It's a 10-2 run. Here's Ryan Walker from outside. He shoots 43% from three. That's his first three of the night. Got himself going inside. Now he's picking it up on the outside. He was 0 for 3 just in the first half of three-point range and was able to knock that one down. Sinclair blocked by Mills. Rebound by McMillan, and he's fouled. The size of Farmington is really starting to wear down Pena, and they're really doing a better job of getting two Shrake on the perimeter. A lot of that's been due, due to Gavin Welker switching to him defensively here in the second half. That extra two inches has really bothered Shrake in the second half. McMillan struggled at the line tonight. One of four. He makes that one. Troy Pinkston back into the game for Pena. McMillan's an offensive and defensive lineman for the Panthers football team. He makes that one. He's got three points. 44-42. And the Panthers come up with the turnover. Nice passing inside. Sinclair the bucket. And we're tied. Quickly the other way. It's Tim Mells with the bucket. Good job by Mills that time to go at the basket under control. He was able to get the ball up off the glass with defensive pressure. Mills has 10. Off the glass, Sinclair, no good. Agnelletti comes away with it for Farmington. And the size for the Farmers inside made Jake Sinclair adjust his shot off the glass instead of the easy lay in. Came up with a miss. Ryan Welker now gives to Gavin, who almost loses it. 16 seconds left, third quarter. Farmington by two. 
They've raised their shooting percentage now to 56%. Kane is down under 46 now. Mel's for three with five on the game clock for the third quarter. It's a miss. Here comes Pena. Shot it quick. Byers probably could have gotten another dribble or two in. A two-point ball game after three quarters, 46-44. Back after this network break on the IHSA. Of the fine coaching record which these men have. And a good example of this, of this fine, high-caliber coaching, has been done by Mr. Cheryl Hanks, the coach of the Quincy Blue Devils. of IHSA TV. 46-44 after three quarters. Farmington's come back to lead. Let's go to Lisa Prati. Gentlemen, I'm here with Barry Heaton. He was the principal back in 1988 when Pena won the state title. And this has to be really exciting for you to be back. Oh, it's very exciting. Uh, this is about the fourth time that we've been in the state tournament since I've been in Pena, and it's it's really an exciting time. What is uh, the comparison between the two teams from 88 till now? I think they're two uh, totally different types of team. Uh, this team's probably a little, little better shooting team than the 88 team, but the 88 team was uh, real tough defensively, and uh, uh, they're both real exciting to watch. Well, I noticed that you brought a lot of fans with you in the back there. Oh, Pena gives uh, great support to their team, and uh, when they get to this level, uh, about the whole town comes. Barry, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank back you. to you, Lee. Thanks, Lisa. Jake Sinclair ties it, 46-46. Little mid-range jump shot that time by Sinclair. Didn't try to take it all the way to the bucket. So he'll give himself squared up. Easy little shot from about five feet. Nice pass inside. Mel's up and good. Agnew the assist. Give Mel's the bucket and he'll go to the line. Fouls on J.I. McDowell, the second. And Mel's just got freed on the baseline. A little late coming over was McDowell. Does a good job of drawing the foul with the grid, good upper body strength, knocking in the shot for the three-point opportunity. Mills, the 64% free thrower, gives Tom Weir's his team a three-point lead. McMillan will try the three. It's no good. Good hustle by McDowell to get the rebound. Flings it out to half court where Schrake gets it. And Mel, good hustle. It'll be paint a ball. I had it. I was open. You're not quite as quick as you used to be. In. <laughs> there wasn't much to brag about way back then either. <laughs> Coming up next week here in Peoria, more March Madness, double A style. The quarterfinals on March 16th, followed by the semis and the championship. Also, the country insurance three-point showdown. And that'll be Saturday of next week on St. Patty's Day, don't you know? And Farmington has some state tournament experience at the IESA level. Welkers, Williams, Ayers led Logan School to a state title back in eighth grade. And I talked to the guys about that yesterday. Of course, this is a much different level, but all that kind of experience helps. Well, and playing together like that helps. And we touched on that in a couple of earlier games today as well. A lot of these teams have been together for several years. And when you get to this level and you know what your, your teammate can do and is capable of, that really means quite a bit. Here's Shrake for three. He's got 23. His dad played on the 81 team. Joey Shrake had 25 and a quarterfinal loss against Liberty. And again, Gavin Welker at 6'7 was flying at the shot. Shrake doesn't need a whole lot of room to get that ball off. Tied at 49 with 6'14 to play. And Welker called for traveling. Ryan Welker. That was the old jump stop play where he jumped and lifted one foot again. And the moment you do that, the official's right on top of the call. We've had one overtime game today, one by Westmont. Could we have another one here tonight? The 
inside Evans was all alone and the whistle against Farmington great ball reversal that time by Pena really swung the ball around and Josh Evans did a good job of getting himself available open on the block takes him strong in the basket draws the foul he'll go to the line for two Gavin Welker his second personal Evans is a 60% free thrower. He makes that one. He's got five points. Pena back to a one-point lead. 51-49. 558 left. Farmington just beats the 10 count. Mells takes it to the hoop. Off, high off the glass. Nice bucket by Mells. He's got 15. And we're tied again. Good upper body strength by Mells. A little change of pace dribble. Was able to get himself free up on the baseline and get to the bucket. Pena's on route 51. And we're tied at 51. Oh, my goodness. With Evans open inside. We didn't see him. Here's Mells. McDowell tried to take the charge. No call. Uh, McDowell was set up underneath the basket. Good call, good no call that time by the official. Mells really had the advantage going to the basket and was able to lay it in. Farmington by a bucket. Five minutes left in regulation. Drake works one on one. Goes over Gavin Walker for the bucket. He's got 25. Drake's really done a good job of taking the ball to the basket in this half. Really settled for the three-point shot in the first half is very effective. That's freed up his opportunities to get to the bucket here in the second half. Mel tries the 20-footer. It's good. And holds the pose. 20 for Tim Mel. A little bit of a fadeaway there that time. He had 19 in the super. And now here's Sinclair with the way up at the other end. Good pass and cut that time by Sinclair getting to the bucket. He's picked it up as his offensive game here in the second half as well. Whoever gets the ball last might win this game. Back and forth here in the fourth quarter. 56-55 Farmington. Here's Mells again. He's feeling it. They got the points. That's good follow through, and it's a four-point Farmington lead. I believe that's their biggest. I tell you, it really is a big advantage for Farmington when they have both Walkers and Mel's out there on the perimeter can see over the defense and make those passes cross court like they did there in the last possession as well. Mel's open from three. 59, 55, 340 to play. Shrek, way downtown. I, I don't know how Mel's didn't block that shot. I think he went in front of the ball before it left Shrek's hand. Or Shrake's hand. That's just amazing. He knocked that shot down. There's no rotation on the ball, but the kid is just unconscious. In addition to that 51-point game, Shrake's got two games in the 30s this year. As Pena comes up with the steal, they take it away from Agnelletti. Shrake has 28. Sinclair and McDowell, the stepbrothers, give to each other. McDowell for three. Big three there by McDowell. He's really struggled in this ball game so far. His first bucket had a couple of defensive and rebounding lapses, but that'll give him a little bit of confidence down the stretch. And the whistle on the drive will go against Pena. J.M. McDowell picks up his third. Don't go away. It's going to be a good finish. 2.55 left. A two-point game. We'll be back with more after this network break on the IHSA Basketball Network. We're back at Carver Arena. Both teams firing up the threes. Farmington the better percentage. Pena has the advantage in numbers, though. Well, and Pena with uh, Justin Shrake letting it fly from the outside. He's hit two again here lately, and he's really starting to warm up again after his first half performance. One thing to keep in mind here as we hit in the last three minutes of the, the ball game is Farmington only has two fouls to paint his five, so it comes to a situation where they need to foul to create a one and bonus opportunity. They have to keep an eye on that. They're five fouls away right now from putting from him at the line. WRSP and WCCU in Springfield tape delaying tonight's game at 10 o'clock for Pena fans. And this will be shown again 
at 10 o'clock on WAOE in Peoria. Gavin Welker. Got glass and nothing else. Jump ball the call. Farmington keeps it on the alternating possession. Poor shot that time by Gavin Welker. Really penetrated in the lane and took it on his own. Instead of trying to move the ball back and forth across the perimeter to see if they can get an opening. Farmington with the ball down two. Try to get it inside. Evans comes up with the steal, and here comes Sinclair. Good hustle by Sinclair to come from the opposite side of the floor and anticipate the pass and come up with the steal. 61-59. Pain of the two-point lead. McMillan with it, guarded by Ryan Smith. Runs right into Mells and travels. McMillan's a football player, but he's only 5'10". <laughs> Running into Tim Mells, he's probably going to bounce off of him. Well, and he had Gavin Walker that came over double teamed, came off of uh, Justin Schrake that time. Kind of a surprising move by the defensive assignment for Farmington. Tim Mells, that one's short. Might have been blocked. And a whistle against Farmington. Farmington's really getting them impatient on offense. They've done a good job of moving the ball here in the second half. Getting good shots in the last two times down the floor between Gavin Walker and now Tim Mells. Uh, really launching the first time they get the hands on the ball. That's two on Ryan Welker, three team fouls as we approach the two-minute mark. Farmington's been in big games like this all year. One of the better schedules in the state. Taking on Illini Central, Rock Falls, McComb. Here comes Evans down the baseline, misses the bunny. Williams had just a, a hand on that enough to force Evans to come up short on that little short shot. Under two minutes now. Inside, Gavin Welker now gives to Ryan. Tim Mells will run it again, a minute 30 left. Gavin almost dribbles it off his leg. Good patience this time by Farmington. Good defense by the Panthers. Williams flips it out to Mells. Here's Ryan Welker for three, and it's good. Huge shot by the junior. He's got 16. And it's Farmington by one. Sinclair answers at the other end. Uh, poor job defensively that time by Ryan Smith. Gave up too much room to Sinclair, and he just stared him down and knocked down the big three. They exchanged threes, and it's still painted by two with 46 seconds left. We'll be back with the finish after this network break. Don't go away. Welcome back, our Midwest Dairy Association local dairy farmer scholar athlete for Farmington, Gavin Walker. We told you, perfect 4.0 grade point average, number one in his class. Undecided on where he'll attend college. Wants to go into physical therapy, and he's active in church youth group and Spanish club. And for Pena, it's Brian McMillan, the lineman. 4.97 GPA, we assume that's out of five. Seventh in his class. Wants to go to the Air National Guard or ISU. Can't go wrong there. Wants to go into administrative justice. Yes, the power of cheese. There's the Pleasant Plains Band. Providing entertainment for the fans here. So is Tom Weir's with Farmers. And Gary Boker's Paint of Panthers going right down to the wire here. Oh, 46 big. seconds left. There's the game reset. Talked about the fouls. Farmington has five fouls to get before they can get to that seven foul limit. 47, 46 seconds. That could be a factor. It's down to four now. They've got three team fouls. Both teams with three timeouts. Farmington inbounds. They have the ball down two as time winds down here in regulation. Oh. 
Gavin Walker turns it over. And Farmington has to foul. It's on Ryan Walker. They'll send Justin Schrake to the line. He's an 80% free throw. And they're going to have to foul. He, no, they won't, won't go to the line. They're going to have to right. foul a few more times before they go to the line. Gary Boker is going to take a timeout. 30.2 seconds to play. Yeah, you would have... You assume a team would uh, be in the bonus at this stage of the ball game, but this time it works against Farmington. Up next, another Olympic Conference team, Macomb taking on Bureau Valley. And that's coming your way after this exciting finish here from Peoria. A big reason why that Pena is not in the bonus yet as they're such a perimeter-oriented team. They don't get the ball inside that much against Farmington, and therefore they are, they're not going to get to the line for a lot of free-throw opportunities. Let's listen into the huddle and Gary Boker. Foul, and we can keep the ball out. They have to foul. They have to come up with three more fouls before we'll go to the line. <laughs> Leading scorers in this ball game, Mel's with 23 for Farmington. Both Welker twins in double figures, and Justin Schrake, another big ball game. He has 28, 19 for Jake Sinclair. Almost a turnover. It'll be a foul on Farmington. Now get it into the football player. He's not going to lose control of the ball. <laughs> that was by design, I'm sure. It's on Ryan Walker. That's his fourth. As long as it doesn't have points on both ends, the lineman can hang on to it. Jake Ayers checks into the ball game for the first time for Farmington. That's five team fouls now. They still got two to give with 28 seconds left. Two-point paint a lead. And J.I. McDowell forced to call timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. Justin Schrake was open behind the defense, but if you're not... Dean. Followed by the three-point showdown at 12.30. Followed by, well, we don't know yet, will it be Pena or Farmington taking on the Macomb Bureau Valley winner? And then the Class A slam dunk contest follows that. Big day here at Carver Arena, Peoria. 28 seconds left. 64-62. And a quick foul there, and could be one more to give. Three-tenths of a second tick off. That pretty quick on and off there. Now well, the next foul will send them to the line, so they need to be a little bit selective here of who they foul. Second foul on Frederick. And they inbounds to Sinclair. Ooh. Pretty close there. Crowd thought it might have been a charge. Instead, it's a foul on Friedrich. Probably a good call by the official in that situation. You don't want to, you know, make a, a right. game deciding call in that situation. Make the, the players decide the outcome of the ball game. Sinclair goes to the line. He's a 72% free thrower. He's only shot one tonight. The senior leader makes this team go. Bounces it no good. That strategy paid off for Farmington. 24 seconds left. They trail by two. All they need is a two-point shot. There's no need to launch one from three-point range. Gavin Welker drives off the glass and bounces in and out. How did that not go in? 
And now Farmington has to foul. Mills foul straight. How did that ball not stay in the bucket? Wow. A nice move by Gavin Welker. I don't know how it didn't go in the bucket. His eyes. Well, he had it on the rim the whole time. A little bit of contact below. No call by the official. Again, one of the players to decide the play. And you can see Gavin Welker laying flat on the floor. Can't believe it. Amazed that that ball didn't go in. Gavin Welker is a 55% shooter from the field. Nine seconds left. Jake Sinclair, a missed free throw. Gavin Welker, a missed layup. Well, that's, that's tough. Sometimes the ball just doesn't go down. You might have the best form and the best opportunity. That time it hit the rim both sides and just fell out. The Farmington fans a little concerned here. Down two with nine seconds left. And Pena at the line. You hit two shots here. It makes this a two-possession ball game as opposed to if only knocks down one of the two. And it has to be the first one as well since they're still in the bonus. Shrake's first trip to the line tonight. 28 points for Shrake. Four three-pointers. He hasn't hit a three in the second half. He's an 80% free thrower. Gary Boker, some last second instructions here. Straight goes to the line and he can just about end it here. There's still some time left. He's our country insurance player of the game. And that just adds to it. Now the junior just stepped up and hit nothing but net. Nine seconds to go in the ball game. First trip to the free throw line. See if he can knock this one down. 65-62, 66-62. Makes it a two possession ball game. Mells brings it up off the glass. That layup won't go in, and that's going to do it. Pena comes away with the win. They led by 11 early. Farmington fought back, but Pena holds them off down the stretch. 66, 62 our final. A dejected Farmington Farmers team congratulating Pena. Farmington bows out 26 and 7 after beating some of the top ranked teams on the way to Peoria. They beat Abingdon in the regional final. Abingdon was ranked fourth at the time. They beat Monmouth. They beat Rock Falls in the super sectional. Their season is over. Pena lives to play another day. They go to tomorrow's semifinal game. Here's Lisa Prati. Coach Farmington making a very strong comeback there in the second half, but obviously you had a couple of your shooters really step up, one of them obviously being Shrake. Yeah, he, uh, he stepped up, made some big shots. Uh, he's done that for us all year long. Uh, he doesn't know what pressure is. He just knocks them down, and you know, there's nobody we wanted to have on the free throw line more there with nine seconds to go than Justin Shrake. And you also caused a lot of turnovers there in the second half, especially someone like Sinclair. Yeah, we, uh, we try to pick up our defense and ask them a little bit. You know, on the other end of it, though, they did a good job. They got some easy baskets, but uh, that's, that's the chance we felt we had to take to beat Farmington tonight. So what does this feel to you winning the quarterfinal on your way to the semis? <laughs> it's, it's amazing. You know, uh, every time we've moved on, the, uh, we go from 32 teams to 16. Now it's eight to four. Uh, we're in the final four. I know Justin's happy because his dad only made the final eight, so uh, he's got one better than, than his than old man did. So uh, we're really excited. We can't wait to play again tomorrow. Great, Coach. Thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Also next to me, I have Justin Shrake here. And, Justin, 28 points that you scored in this game in the corner finals. How does this feel now to move on to the semis? It feels great. We're working real hard. Coach in the locker room told us the whole time, just concentrate and relax. You know, we can do it. We just concentrate on Farmington for the past few days, just talking. We have notes written on them. We're ready for what they can show us. You had a nice lead there in the first half against Farmington. Obviously, they coming back very strong there in the second half. They take you by surprise. Yeah, we, in the locker room, we were really motivated. Came out, and our coach, I guess, prepared them very well. They came out firing. 
who, you know, co our two coaches, assistant coach McDowell and Boker, you know, they pull us together and we, they ask us what we want, we want more. We want to go home or we want to play for the championship. So that's what we're going to do. Well, now for preparation now for tomorrow's game in the afternoon, what are you guys going to do tonight? We're going to all get some sleep. We're all going to relax, eat a good meal, and take it easy. Well, right now you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy this for a long time. Absolutely. Well, congratulations, Justin, there with 28 points tonight. I'll send it back to Lee. Quality, though, too. 65% from the field. He was 11 of 17 and shot even better than that from three-point range. Six of nine, 67%. Yeah, great effort by Shrake, but I tell you, the basket that really decided this ball game was when Jake Sinclair got that ball in transition and the Farmington defender backed off of him just enough to get a good look at the basket. His toes on the line, knocked down a huge three to put him up by two. And then the two three th free throws by Shrake made it a two-possession ball game. And uh, Gavin Welker is going to remember that missed layup for a long time. And it, <laughs> I, I, I can't what. believe he missed it. It wasn't that he took a bad shot or that yeah. it was an awful shot. It rolled around on the rim and just didn't go for that it. That ball was halfway down. But this Farmington team, I would not be surprised to see them back here at Carver Arena next year. Very young, a uh, couple of seniors. Yeah, obviously, Tim Mells is one of those, led them in scoring here tonight. But uh, with the Welkers and some of the other players they have, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them back next year. Yeah, you were talking before the game that Farmington might be a year away from uh, playing for a state championship. They gave it their all here tonight. Come up a little short. 66-62, our final. Hope you enjoyed it. Congratulations to Farmington on a great year, 26-7. And, and congratulations to Pena. They move on to the semifinals. For Matt Tapor, Lee Hall, more Class A basketball coming your way next here on the IHSA Basketball Network. Don't go away.